welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we have Brother Gio, Brother Javier, and Brother Josh. We'll be diving into John chapter 15, verses 1 through 17. To begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by Brother Josh, then we're going to get straight into word for today. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you, Father. Lord, again, we just want to thank you for this day that you've made for us, Father, that you allow us to wake up just to be in the land of the living, Lord, just... We thank you for your grace and your mercy over our lives just for keeping us, Father. And Lord, since you've kept us, we want to take this time just to dive into your word together, to fellowship with one another, Father, to study that which you've given us, Lord. And I pray that you allow us to just hear from you today, Holy Spirit, that you would just rest in the midst of this Bible study, that you'll give us understanding on any topic that may be confusing. And we are just expecting some great things to come out of this Bible study. And we pray that you bless anyone who will be watching this in the future. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, guys, we'll be diving into the word for today. We're going to read from verses 1 through 4, then we're going to discuss the word. Verses 1 says, I'm the true grapevine, and my father is a gardener. He cuts every branch of mine that does not produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do, that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. They have already been, they have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remember in me and I will remember in you for a branch cannot produce fruit if, it's, if it is served from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. So I, let's, let's kind of paint a picture of what's going on and identify who is who. So um, it starts out saying, I am the grapevine. If we ever looked at a grapevine, uh, we know it's a single vine that supports um, numerous branches, right? So Christ is saying uh, he is the grapevine and his father is the gardener and whoever um, uh, are believers or followers of Christ, uh, we are the branches, right? So that single vine Christ is supporting all of us that um, uh, profess that we are believers in Christ, right? Um, and so the branches... Um, those that are fruitful are truly believers of Christ, living in union with Christ, right? Um, so let, let's, let's just paint that picture right there so we have that understanding. Um, but the gardener has to sometimes come and cut the plant or cut the branches, right? And it's both a good and a bad thing. He cuts it if it's not uh, bearing fruit, but he also cuts it if it is bearing fruit, right? Pure and pruning it making sure that it's able to continue to keep going. And so it is with us, right? That God will uh, discipline us or work on us so that we continue to grow, right? But if we're not bearing fruit, then we get cut off from that vine. So we no longer have, I think we spoke about this just this week, Gio, that fellowship, right, with Christ, we no longer have that. And I guess to be cut off, it goes a little bit more than fellowship, right? That it's that relationship um, is no longer... Um, there per se. So that's that's uh, my take from the first few verses. What do you think when he says abide in me and I in you? Any idea? So follow me. So what I got from that is follow me and obey me and I will continue to do good unto you. Not necessarily good, but you know, I'll, 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 I'll remain in you. Yes. It's like I mean, we don't necessarily garden, so I'm not sure if you're able to visualize the picture. But a lot, a lot of what Jesus does, and even in the Old Testament, they use a lot of agricultural um, examples, right? So I, I didn't, I didn't recognize this too until one day I was like, I think I was watching Chip and Joanna Gaines on HGTV, and she went into her rose bush. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> she went to her rose bush. They got like this fix and flip house thing. Um, she went out the rose bush or whatever, and she went to go cut some of the bushes, some of the um, branches off of the rose bush. I'm like, why is she doing that? It's perfectly good. And she was explaining. She was like, you have to trim them so that they can bear more, so that they can, so that they can bud more roses. And then anything that turns brown, you just get rid of it because that can um, have an effect on the rest of the flower. So essentially that's what Jesus is saying. Like, and like, just like Javier was saying, um, 
his fellowship and his relationship. If you find yourself out of a relationship with Christ, essentially you you can be considered, you can be related to the branch that does not remain connected or does not remain in relationship with the vine, right? Um, and then if you are in relationship with him, like you know him, you know, you spend time reading, but you don't have that fellowship where you, you don't sit at his feet, you don't pray, you don't seek him continuously, um, then, then what he can, or, or matter of fact, vice versa. And then you can actually, you are doing that. You are reading, you are praying, you are, you know, spending quality time with him on a daily basis. Right. Then what he can do is he can then send you out and use you to bear much fruit. And then there's different types of fruit. Right. I think he says, Oh, we didn't, we didn't get there yet to the fruit part, but when we get there, I'll, I'll bring that up again. Um, but essentially he's just saying abide in me. Right. If you continue to read my word, listen to my gospel, understand it, follow it, live it, then rest assured, I will be inside of you, working on the inside, making sure that you abide in me and I abide in you. It's almost like if you come to Christ when he calls you, then he'll make sure he'll do everything in his power to keep you there. It's up to you whether or not you want to let go of his hand. Yeah, I think um, just to add to what Gio said, re remaining is the key to understanding and the key to growing, right? That the only way we can grow, continue to grow, is by remaining attached to Christ, right? So I, I think there is it's twofold. Um, we have our part to do, but then Christ does his part. He says, um, I believe in James, not sure what chapter, uh, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you, right? So if you remain in God, he will meet you where you are, right? If you make that first move, then God will make two uh, steps closer to you, right? So we, we have our part to do in remaining. Yeah, um, I, I, I've heard the scripture before, but I definitely like the explanation of it now that's put in I personally am into gardening as I'm sure you can see from all the plants I have in my quarter, right? So um, it's kind of cool to kind of see how this is put into scripture, but I'm um, kind of piggybacking off of what Gervais said earlier. Um, it's cool to think about how that which is bad and that which is also producing fruit still gets cut, right? Obviously for different purposes, but a cut at the end of the day is a cut. No, it's all good. Basically, long story short, I know I'm rambling. I was just saying it's cool to think about how that which is bad and that which is good still gets cut, but for different, different purposes. So in our lives, you know, um, I don't like to think of a cut like the father trying to hurt us, right? Because he's, it's only to benefit us. It's only to help us grow in our relationship with him. So I kind of put it in context of situations that we go through. Um, they're not fun, but they all serve their purpose and they help us to produce more fruit so that we can continue to grow. Um, and that's what I took from that. But yeah, I'm highlighting this because I like that scripture. So that's really all I had to contribute. Lastly, abiding is an intentional action. Yes. You are looking to Christ to bring to him all of your burdens. You're going to draw all wisdom, all life, all strength from him. Um, and you are going to intentionally make up in your mind that you are not going to allow anything in your life that will separate you from him. Mm -hmm a.k.a. sin, you will remain in him so that you can bear much fruit. And I guess we'll, we'll get to the fruit part, what that, what that means exactly. But, but even before we get there, what, what do you guys think bearing fruit means? I would say, wouldn't that be like, I'm thinking, wouldn't that be like a talent or, or like a gift? Because I feel like, in a way, I kind of feel like that's bearing fruit because you got to nurture it, you got to nurture it, and then eventually... You take it off and you know eat it to be able to feed it to other people which which is talent you're going to be able to nurture it and get it to a good point where you're able to feed god's people with your talent if that makes sense mm -hmm. okay i'm i personally am not sure like i'm, I'm still kind of stuck in the plant analogy right because you can tell how well a plant is growing based on how big it is how it looks and stuff like that right i'm not 
quite sure what that standard is when it comes to our relationship. Actually, no, I know what it is when it comes to our relationship with Christ. But when it comes to us bearing fruit as Christians, I'm not sure how to measure that, how to judge that. So I'm not quite sure. Okay. I know you didn't realize this, bro, but he just said, I am the true vine and my father's the husband. And are there any false vines or are there any other vines for that matter? Hmm. I love the Bible. Wow. I, I just love the simple wordplay. It, it boggles me, man. I, I love it. And we skipped right over that. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, I think that's cool. Okay, so I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. Right, so now that I'm here, I'm thinking about fruit and stuff like that, things being cut off. Um, it still has to be, like we said, it has to abide. It still has to be connected, right? Um, so if Jesus is saying that he's the true grapevine, that means that there are other things in life that we can try to connect ourselves from, that we can try to use as our source, you know, that want to produce good fruit. Come on, preacher. Work, work the text. <laughs> but no, um, I, I really do love how, because I really did skip over that, that one word, I am the true, it gives it a whole new meaning. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, absolutely what you said can most certainly be applied, right? Um, but what Jesus is doing, as we know, his entire run uh, once he starts his ministry, is to fulfill the scriptures, fulfill all the prophecies that were given in the Old Testament. And so Israel, the house of Israel, is actually the vineyard of the Lord. Um, and Judah is considered his pleasant plant. But they just couldn't get it right. So Jesus had to come and actually be the vine and that his his father had to be the husbandman. So for whatever reason, Israel couldn't get it right. They couldn't stay in connection with the father. So Jesus had to become and to then attach himself to Israel and whomever else decided to be attached to him and make the connection be the bridge to attach to the father. So now you have this one connection. That's why he calls himself the true vine. He came to fulfill the scripture. He, he did, he did. Um, and also what you said too, Josh, like you can find yourself connected to other things as your source. Now we'll be, now we'll be moving into the, the follow verses. So we'll, do, we'll be reading from verses five to eight. Verse five says, Yes, I am divine. You are the branch. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. But apart from me, you cannot do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch or wit withers. Such branches and gardening and gardening into a pile to be burnt. But if you remain in me and my word remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciple. This brings great glory to my father. So I feel like verse five is definitely something we covered. Um, and I didn't even realize it was the next verse. Like we definitely were not in Christ. We were fruit. But I actually have a question about verse six. Um, because I don't, I don't know how to properly ask it, but it's like, you're, you're not remaining in Christ, right? And here the scripture says that at that point, you'll be thrown away like a branch who withers. Is there any point where you can come back to the true grapevine, where you can come back to relationship with Christ after that? I mean, sorry, I know it's probably an elementary question, right? Because obviously, you know, people make mistakes and people can come back to Christ. But no such I, thing, brother. I'm trying to... That's a great question. I'm trying to understand that. It's like it says you're thrown away, uh, you're gathered into a pile to be burned. At that point, for based off of that scripture, I would feel like that's an eternal thing. Like you're you're just done with. But we know that we have grace, mercy, forgiveness, and we have a father who we can run to with open arms, right? So how does that kind of play in with scripture? Jay, let me take a stab at it, and then I'll let you go. Um, 
so it's interesting that you said the branch will be gathered together and then it will be thrown into the fire to be burned. That part is sounds like judgment. Mm-hmm. Like there's no coming back from that part. You've already been judged and you're going into the lake of fire, right? Um, but as long as you can go, you got a chance to get back to God. As long as you're breathing, bro, no matter what you did, no matter what you did, you have a chance. Like, low-key, if Lucifer wanted to wake up and be Lucifer again, maybe he'll have a chance. But I don't think that's what's going to happen, according to the scriptures anyway. Yeah, I think that was a great question. I don't, you know, it wasn't rudimentary or anything like that. Um, so I think the backdrop of this verse, um, as it, which is why actually what we all think being fruitful means, the backdrop of it is soul winning, right? Um, remaining in Christ. So the backdrop of that is, is soul winning, right? You remain in Christ, you produce more fruit, more fruit, more souls, right? Um, I don't think verse six is for right now. I think like Gio says, it's, it's for judgment. So I think you have remained disconnected for Christ until he came back, that there is no chance for you to come back. Yeah. If, if that uh, makes sense. That's how I see this verse. Um, but as long as right now, maybe tomorrow, if God's been the word and spirit, like, then we have a chance. Or those people have a chance uh, to come back and get uh, reattached per se um, to the true vine. Right. Um, so I think it's, more pertaining to end time um judgment, right in which those that are so severed or separated from the vine uh the chances of them coming back slim to none they, you know i don't know only god knows right um but verse five going back a little bit is one of my favorite verses um and i i love the last part of it from apart from me, you can do nothing. I use that for everything. Uh, I can't do anything without God, whether it's ministry, spiritual, work, uh, being a husband, being a, a brother, being an uncle, being a friend. I can do nothing without God. So unless we are connected to Christ in everything we're doing, I personally say I can do nothing without him. So I ask you, what does it mean to be fruitful, right? And I believe being fruitful is not just limited to soul winning, right? But we can be fruitful in other areas of our lives, right? Uh, we know the fruit of the spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, all those, all of those. So fruitful in that aspect. Uh, we can be fruitful in our ministry. We can be fruitful um, in our marriage, Right. It can be fruitful in our friendships and our connections with other people. So um, I think it, it, it's not just limited to soul winning, even though the backdrop of it is soul winning, but we can be fruitful in other areas as well. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. He's So Jesus is just, he's chatting for a minute, um, even all the way back to like chapter 14. And he's talking to his disciples. He's letting them know about his betrayal but he's letting him know that even though he has to uh, move on to the next part to fulfill the scripture, that he's going to um, leave them a comforter in his place. Like he, he's just talking, he's setting everything up, you know, and, and, and he's saying, listen, you're going to have a task in my absence. I need you to continue to do what I was doing while I was here going out and winning souls for me. Like Jay said, like the, the, the backdrop of this, the purpose of this speech is for, to tell his disciples that I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to go out and continue to gather people. And when Jay was just saying that, it just made me think like, I don't even think you realize that the agenda changed. Adam and Eve in the garden didn't have to win any souls. They just had to fellowship because the relationship was already there. And then all of a sudden, it just is like, 
the agenda switched when sin entered the world. And now I'm looking at it as like everybody goes so crazy about oh, what's my purpose, what's my, what's my purpose? And it's just like we're supposed to be all out there winning souls almost. But like, like Jay said, there's other ways to be fruitful, right? You have, like you said, the fruit of the spirit, which all comes out of remaining connected to Christ, right? Like patience, love, a long suffering, um, self-control. Even if you have those things, those things still go together with winning souls like it, it, it just like it all revolves back to just winning souls if you're faithful in your marriage you win souls if you're faithful in um like you said you meant your ministry you're winning souls right they said the best way to show that you are a christian is to live it live the word and to love others mm-hmm. to live and to love and that alone will let like let people know that you are Christian. I actually have one more question. Um, just a little side question. Um, when we were talking about um, producing fruit, how that correlates to winning souls, I w- I'm just curious. Does that have anything to do with one's um, amount of influence that they have? So, like for example, I, I would look at myself compared to like a I don't know who's a big like TD Jakes, right? In in this context of winning souls being that um this man is grown more and this man has you know a large media presence and stuff like that um in that sense would he be considered to be more fruitful than i am being that he's capable of winning souls more like is that how that works not that we're in competition obviously i'm just curious if that's a thing Does the question make sense? It does. Yeah, it's like it's like it's almost like you're like trying to quantify mm-hmm. how fruitful you are, right? Yes. Is that a bad thing? Nope. It's a good question. I think um, if we just go based off the principle, right? Just based off of what Jesus is saying, He says, "The more you abide in Me, the more fruitful you will become." So I'm I'm going to take a stab at it. Like I'm not saying this is a this is factual right but uncle jake's is our senior by at least 40 years right well not us but maybe he is right jake's probably like 60 70 right 60s mid 60s yeah right so he just has he just had more time to abide in you abide in christ <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so he can bear more fruit right um I, I just I'm just making it as simple as possible. Um, but if you dedicated your life, Josh, to nothing else but just abiding in Christ, you can be like a Gideon. You can be like a Daniel. You can be like young David, right? Like where you can move mountains. Like, oh, who's this Josh Malachi dude? Like, how old is he? What? You can. It all depends on how intentional you are about abiding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I look at that in, in, in two, two ways. Two things comes to mind. Um, first, the story of the master and the three servants. I mean, he gives them all different talents, right? Um, and two, they went out with the original talent. They went out, they got some more. And we know one buried it. Right. And didn't do anything. Um, reason why I think about it like that. I, I think it's almost the same thing in a sense that God puts us in a certain area and says, use what I give you and go make more. Right. And then bring him back to the kingdom. Um, but it, it's what he's given you. Right. So he's given TD Jake's. And it has to do with his years and, as Gio said, him abiding, right? Um, he's given him a big reach. So he has a church of several thousand people, or that could fit several thousand people. So he has a big reach. He has a big presence. He has a big platform, right? So he goes and he may 
bear more because he has a bigger reach, a bigger platform, right? We, we may not have as big of a reach or as big of a platform. So we may not bear as much because of his reach. That does not mean though that we cannot bear as much as him. I don't want to confuse it or contradict what I'm saying. Um, just because yes, our yeah. reach is not as big as him, right? It's not the number of fruits that we're that we're going after. It's the quality of the fruit. Like how much is that? What you saying, Jay? Uh, both in the sense, it, I, I am talking about the number. I'm, I'm saying, okay, reach. Jake's has more reach, a bigger platform, so he'll probably be able to reach more people, bear more fruit, or mm -hmm. number in that regard. Right, right. We 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 don't have a big as big of a platform or as big of a reach. So we may not bear as much fruit, but that does not mean we cannot bear as much fruit because we don't have a platform as big as his, right? So we gotcha. shouldn't let the size of the platform or the size of the reach diminish how far we can reach. I'm just, right. just trying to put into perspective why he may bear more fruit, but I don't think God is keeping tally, right? Because he's positioned us in a certain area, right? So he, he has Jake positioned where he wants him to be positioned. So he, he blessed him to have a greater reach, right? But God has called us to be faithful in the small things or faithful in whatever he gives us. So even though our reach may not be as big, we're still to be faithful and he still expects a return on what he has given us, just like the masters. The first one he gave 10, right? That could be Jake's. The second one he gave five. Right, but they were both faithful, and they both went out and got some more. I know it was long-winded, but I hope it makes sense. I don't think God is keeping a tally, right? Because then it will it, it would become a competition, and then we would do it because we believe God is keeping this tally. And the more we do, the more God is going to bless us, and the more we do, the the, the more we're going to get into heaven, and the more we're going to move up on the the, the, the ranking. You know, I, I got to beat Jake because he has a more a thousand more than me, so I got to go and do work. I don't think he's keeping tally in that sense. I just think. Go out and be faithful over what I've blessed you and where I have, I have positioned you to be. Long-winded, but I hope it makes sense. It does. It does. Thank you. That makes. I think that uh, makes. I was gonna say. I was gonna say that makes a lot of sense. I kind of compare it to me uh, with the story that you just said because I was blessed with one talent and was able to multiply my talent. Which I'm thank I thank God for every single day. And I just thought I just thought I was just gonna use the gift of speech. I didn't realize that I was gonna turn into motivational speaking and preaching and all the other stuff that they turn into. And also with the platform, uh like uh Javid A said and um Jill said Brother T Brother T D Jake have been in this way longer than us. <laughs> So he had more experience, he had more learning, and with uh, the longer you are in something, the bigger position you're gonna have. Like with me, I'm not blessed with a big position because I haven't been in this for that long. I've been in this, so doing doing Christian content three years, but YouTube in general five years. So God's not gonna bless me with a big platform yet because I still I gotta work in Him, I gotta learn, I gotta grow more in order to get to that platform. So don't really come, don't. Uh, I don't know how I can say it. Don't uh, be discouraged by how big of a platform somebody has because it all comes with your years and experience and God abiding with you and you abiding with him. Uh, go to you. So I just want to put emphasis on if all God tells you to do is win one soul, then that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. Leave, leave, leave saving the thousands and the millions of souls to Jake. That's Ron. He just needs you to win one. And I just, Jay, you just hit me just now when you was like 10 talents here, five talents there, and one talent there. What are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. Are you going to go out and multiply it? And so now I'm thinking my position in the church, where's the fruit? And all I can think about is Ezra or Keanu, who sent me that text yesterday. Oh, I'm super, like, is it weird that I'm excited to read the Bible? 
yeah. and write notes and ask questions. I was like, no, I was like, sure. welcome. We've been waiting for you. Sure. And it's just like, those are the fruit. And, and that, that's why I wake up as a morning at 8 o'clock in the morning. Because I promise you, remember, this was just supposed to be like a, a you and I thing. That's how it started. I was just a conversation. Yo, I, wanna, I was like, yo, let's read. He's like, all right, cool. We had a conversation. And the next thing you know, you know, just I'm just looking at how God works and, and, and all the bad that we can list on a sheet of paper about COVID, there's still so much good that came out of it. Absolutely. We can, we can sit in our homes miles away from each other and still get the message, get the gospel across the world. Mm-hmm. So that's just, this is the self-check for all four of us. If, we, if, if it's safe to say, right, if you guys give me the liberty to say this, gauge your connection with Christ by your fruit that you bear. Are you abiding in Christ? And if so, are you bearing fruit to prove it? And the fruit could be winning souls or the fruit just for now could be fruit of the spirit. Are you changing? Mm-hmm. Are you showing long suffering? Are you loving those who hurt you? Are you praying for those who persecute you? Are you are you showing self control as men, as young men? We have a lot of things that we should need to show self control over, right? Check just a self check for everybody. That was good. That that was and on behalf of myself, Jill, thank you for coming along and being able to help me through this uh, journey. Not. I'm not talking about the YouTube channel, I'm just talking about life in general. YouTube because too. I don't remember you being yeah, YouTube too. I promise you, bro. I keep trying to tell you that. When I met you at 13, you did not talk at all. <laughs> you <laughs> swear up and down. I said, talk. I said, talk. No, you did not. Uh, anyway, I, 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 I ain't talking about it then. I was, I was quiet to myself. I, shout, out, shout out to Moses. Shout out to Moses, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I was able to grow out of that, and now I'm talking to um, hundreds. World. Yeah, hundreds. I'm not going to say million. I'm not there yet. Hundreds. I'm talking to hundreds. I can't picture you ever being quiet. I don't know. I just I feel like Ezra. Yeah, that's that's why that's why it was confusing. I, I didn't remember me being quiet because of how loud I am now. I'm like, I used to be quiet. So, but yeah, I, w- I was quiet for like a go while. We'll get into that later. Uh, um, there's uh, another key verse that we didn't touch. Um, but if you remain in me seven and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. And I think this came up in another verse um, a couple of weeks ago, right? And, and that's not a, uh, I write everything down on a list that I want. I give it to God and he gives it to me. That's not how it works. I mean, that's not what the verse is saying, but in being connected to God, you learn to desire what he desires. Um, his will become your will. So when you pray, you're praying his will be done. You're praying what he desires. So, so I want us to understand that it's not that when we pray, God, whatever I ask you for, you're going to give me, I ask you for, um, a house and it's going to happen right away because it's a wish list. It's Santa Claus. I bear fruit. I remain on the nice list and he's going to give me what I want. Right. When his heart, his desire through that fellowship of remaining and abiding in him. Right. So then what we ask, because it's what's in his heart, then it will be granted. Not because we ask whatever comes to mind. That's good, man. It is. Now, right, guys, we'll be diving back into the Word. We'll be reading from verses 9 through 14. Verse 9 says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as, just as I obey my Father's commandment and remain in his love, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friend if you do what I command. Oh, bro. Love, like, there's like a trillion definitions 
according to people. You get you could ask so many different people, like of course, what how you know somebody loves you? Like what's the definition of love? Like I there you go. Uh, I like to point out a key verse where it says in um verse twelve, this is my commandment, love each other the same way I have loved you. That's a very important um verse in my opinion. Cause I think we kinda get the definition of love and what love is. Um we misinterpret it. And we don't show it or like use it in the right way. I I just I just realized that Jesus says I love you as the Father loves me. That love is different. <laughs> That's a different type of love. Like and, and and to be considered a friend of Jesus, I don't think there's any other BFF in this world that could out friend Jesus' friendship. Sure. And 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 just to be sure, it's just it's crazy because it's like I don't know if you guys like have like ever taken like calculus or like statistics, but there's a, a segment in that in that um curriculum where you learn conditional statements. It's like if then and it's almost like a conditional thing with Jesus. He's like, yo, you could be my friend if you do whatsoever I command you to do. <laughs> and it's like, you just can't be like friends just because you got the juice. I want to be connected to what you got. Like, I got to do what you're telling me to do. So, it's, but it's just the basic foundation for any relationship. Nobody wants to be a doormat. Nobody wants to be walked over. Nobody wants to be taken advantage of, right? Like, would you call me your friend if every time I see you, I'm spitting on you, punching on you, you know, just using you for your money and everything that you have to give me? No. It has to be a connection. We got to we gotta vibe back and forth. It's the same concept. Yeah. And that love, uh, loving each other in the same way, what does that look like for us? Right? That's how did... He loved us. It's a sacrificial love, right? An unconditional love, right? Um, a life-given love, right? Um, and we are to love each other in the same way, that same manner. Um, and sacrificial love is, is on top. We, obviously unconditional, but sacrificial love? Oh, man, you don't learn that till you get married. Yes. And then, oh, and then probably after you have, and obviously when kids come, because I think that's also another a higher degree in some senses, right? So Gio is in that boat. Um, but I can attest to the sacrificial love when you're being married. Like, it's different type of love, a right? different tier um, of love. And it's... I was saying verse 12 is the scripture I like, but um, it's definitely, I feel like it's easier said than done. Uh, but it reminded me of um, this scripture in First Corinthians uh, chapter 13, um, it just talks about what love is. It says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily anchored, anchored, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. And that's the type of love that I know that the Father shows us. But it's, like I said, easier said than done to show that towards others right try my best to be a loving person but um the part where it talks about keep it keeps no record of wrongs that's the type of love that i'm striving for because i have always had that forgive but don't forget mentality right but jesus is here like forgive let it go and i'm I, like i don't know it might be a, just a worldly fleshly thing but that's what i'm saying I'm praying that I get to that level one day because, yo, when people do you, like, when people do yeah. you wrong, I mean, we, we as Christians, we love to say, you know, I forgive you, but you don't, you don't want to let that go. Like, you don't want to set yourself up for failure again. So, I don't know. I just felt like sharing that. That's something that I'm working, I'm working yo, on. Jay. Hold on, hold on. Jay. He's talking about you, Jay. I remember when Mal was like, 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 we have a quick argument. I'll get over it. And Jay's like, no, I'm still tight. 
I don't, <laughs> I don't want to come down yet. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. I nah, most definitely. But like, when you heat it, you ain't ready to come down. You got to make your nah. <laughs> nah. Yeah, yeah. It, it takes me a while. And even after, like, to, to come back and be, you know, regular, I, I take some time. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Leave me alone for a little bit. <laughs> I, I feel y'all so much that for me. Uh, I, I got to work on that same, the same thing, uh, Josh. I got to work on that. And then plus, I get aggravated easily. So it makes it worse for me. So I, 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 I got to work on that. And with me, I have that mentality of forgive and remember. And by remember is remember that you forgive. So in a moment where you feel like you're about to bring up something, you got to remember, like, I forget that person. Like, mm -hmm. I'm no longer holding this against them. So uh, I, know, I don't think the Bible mentions forgive and remember, but that's how I see it. Like, I got to always try to remember that I forgive that person. Mm -hmm. so yeah. that's, that's a whole word. <laughs> forgive and remember? Yo, hold on, Josh. I don't mean to cut you. I wasn't sure where you were going with that. No, that's good. I'll forgive and remember. Remember that you forget. Wow. That's, that's good. That's good. That's profound. That's you better good. make that sermon, bro. Woo! Yo, if you hear me preaching that, if you see it on Facebook <laughs> on the Bushwick's page, then you already know where I got it from. Yeah, but, but I, I have a whole video where I talked about forgiveness. This, I think, not last year. Either last year video or a video the year before where I, I talked about that. Forgive and remember. Remember that you forgive. Because uh, I feel like the forget part don't really work because because in that moment if you forget it's like that that um part where you forgive if it comes to your mind you'll probably ignore it and just go off but if you like say to yourself like i remember i forget that person i remember that i'm no longer holding that grudge she has you guys are going to ease you ease you now so everybody out there when you forgive forgive and remember but I remember i mean remember that you forgive that person so in case of any situation where you're about to get heated or conflict or any type of thing about to happen just bring that back to your mind that i forgive this person for what they did yes sir go ahead josh you were, you were gonna say something before i cut you my fault no no that's fine i i, I didn't have a, a question or anything i was just um piggybacking off of what he said um just with the remind so I personally, I have I have a pretty good memory, right? So when it comes to having a conflict with someone, I'm automatically thinking back to past things they've said, past things they've done, right? On, so on December 15th at 11.57 and 23 seconds. <laughs> oh, and like, I'm dead serious. So it's, I'm trying to apply the scripture, like love, no wreck the wrongs, but like, if we get in an argument, I'm gonna remind you of what you did wrong and what you said. Car facts. I'm showing you the car facts. I'm pulling it uh, up. Bro, I'm, I'm sending you screenshots. It's like, bro, but it is so. It's really. That's why I say I'm praying to get to. Like, I don't know many people who are like this, but I'm praying to get to that point in my walk with God, where like I can literally just brush things off and leave it brushed off, right? Because we say it all the time, like. I feel like, like I said, we forgive that person, but we still, you know, we still hold that memory of what they did. But what kind of freedom is, is that? What kind of liberty is that, you know, to, to say that you're letting go of something, but to still hold it in the back of you, right? But when you actually let something go, like truly, I'm sure it's in, it's an unbelievable feeling. So like I said, I'm praying that I get there, but we'll, we'll make, we'll make, we'll make it as wrong. <laughs> I've got there with certain situations, not, not all of them. Like, it's one particular situation I, I got to forgive because I'm still holding a grudge against, against that person. Uh, any any more thoughts? Anything else to add on? Um, no, I was just saying, if we keep going, we're going to delve into forgiveness. But um, always know that forgiveness is first for you, first for you and I, before it is ever for the other person. So the longer you hold on to uh, whatever it is that they did to you, even though you've forgiven them, but you haven't let go of, like, released it and it, it it's 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 harming you not necessarily the other person right so it's it's for you to heal from that and some things take time right but just know that it's it's for you to heal from that that person done moved on they're living their life they probably don't even know that they hurt you in such a way and it affected you and impacted you so much but they're doing them and you you're still boggled down and and stagnant because of what they did to you 
right? Uh, but know that it's always for you and not for the other person. Or primarily for you, not for the other person. Amen. Amen. Now we'll be diving into the last few verses, verses 15 through 17. With 15 says, I no longer call you slaves because a master does not confine with his slave. Now you are my friend. Since I have told you everything the Father told me, you, you didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce long-lasting fruit so that, the, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command, love each other. So, um, one thing that my Bible points out is, to, is the progression of intimacy how they go from being servants to now being friends. And then later on, we'll see that they become brothers. Um, and I think that all stems from abiding, right? Your relationship and your fellowship with Christ. Um, Josh, to answer your question, I actually had a revelation. <clears throat> well, it wasn't a question, but you said like a statement more so, like how, how to get to the point where you're living that definition of love in first Corinthians and like, I'm clearly not checking off all those things on that list. Like it's some unchecked boxes, but Holy spirit told me I have to be intentional about abiding and more so specifically reading daily. Something about when I read the moment I come out of that session, it's like everything that happened before, everything that's happening in that moment, and then whatever is to come, I'm just like, oh, how are you? Hello. Like, I'm just light. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just, I feel like I'm not walking in self. I feel like a new me has come and it's just, so that's just for me. Like, I, I'm not sure if it's going to work the same for you, but the more I take time to read God's word, the more understanding of life in totality that I have. And therefore, I'm able to address situations. Or as I would like to say, you guys, J, moment by moment, I'm walking with Christ. So even as we transition from this Zoom call, we have to go and do something else. Are we going with Christ? Yeah. Are, are, are we allowing the Holy Spirit to take us to the next moment? Or are we getting up and we're just moving in our own flesh and our own thoughts and our own mind, which is going and going and going? Moment by moment, we have to be intentional about allowing the Holy Spirit to go with us. One last thing. So it just it's just a piggyback off of that, right? So like case in point, like I say, we, we're in a discussion with somebody, right? And they do they do us a wrong. I believe that, yeah, our feelings will get hurt. We have to acknowledge it, but it's going to come a point in time that our relationship with Christ will be so secured, so dominant in us that we will learn to say, ouch, instead of I'm going to get you back. That hurt. And then the next step is, let's dig into that a little bit deeper. Like, why did you do that to hurt me? Like, I don't know if you knew you were going to hurt me. Or well, even if you did know you were going to hurt me, like what in you made you want to do that to me? And then you, your, your wisdom, your knowledge is just, it changes. Like you can go to the root of the problem, almost like, like how Jesus did with the woman at the well. He knew exactly where he wanted that, that, that conversation to end up. Like when you have that wisdom, that understanding, from reading the word, you just, you approach life completely differently. Yeah, that was good. I, I love the, um, ouch, that hurt. That, that's good. If you see that sermon title as well, then you know. You know? <laughs> that was just the inspiration flow this morning. I, yeah, I'm good. I, I don't, I don't have anything to add. I think that, that was well stated by Gio. Um, I'm good. I'm, pr I'm praying to get to that to that more. I could be like, ouch. Because I'm at the more where it's like, oh, you did that? Watch. Swatch. 
Yeah, I know that's not a good mentality, but I got, I got, I got to work on that. Uh, still have a lot of areas that I to improve, but with the Father uh, abiding me and I abiding in Him, we'll be able to work on that. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to say to answer or to piggyback off what you just said. Um, as um, the more you abide, the more um, uh, more of Him will flow to you which is exactly how it works in, in plants, um, right, Josh? It will flow from uh, the vine or the root throughout the branches to the leaves, right, or to the fruit. Um, so the more you abide, the more you will um, become more like Christ in every aspect. Amen. I, I also like to point out that in verse 16, it says that I, I chose you, you didn't choose me. This is a very important scripture because I feel like I know I didn't choose to be in this position. God chose me to be in this position. I just fall up into it <laughs> because it, honestly, if it was up to me back in 2015, I wouldn't have done this. But because God chose me, I was able to, and I was faithful. I was able to fulfill this position, and I'm going to continue to grow and continue to learn and continue to fellowship with my brothers, my sisters, and everybody else. Yeah, God has chosen all of us to be in a position where where I, me, and um, Brother Josh, and being our mini leadership position as you, and then Gio and Jare in their more uh, next level leadership position as you leaders, as brothers, as mentors, and all the other uh, position that they play. But yeah, I want you to touch on um, the sacrifice in marriage and kids, since you're the only one here that could talk about that. Before we had, uh, I want you to touch on that. That's something that's tough to put in words, um, because not everybody, not everybody makes a sacrifice. Hence, the reason you have broken homes. That you know, you have, or you have mixed homes. Like, oh, we got the same mother, different father, or I don't even know where my father. Is. It's just like it's it's tough to. That's why every the foundation for every relationship, friendship, marriage, what have you, I think Christ should be the foundation of that relationship. Um, in terms of the sacrifice, you know, let's say let's say you are a person that knows how to do that. Um, but even even if you even if you know, you're still learning how to do more of it day by day, situation by situation, or moment by moment. Um, you know, you know, one of the kids coming to me, Dad you know, I need this, so I need that. And I'm just like, yo, I just pay all the bills. Like, where you want me to get it? And then next thing you know, I'm on the phone with Jay. Like, yo, you good, bro? I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm clocking into my fourth job right now. I'm going to hit you right back. Like, you know, so it just, that's the the mentality. Like, it's, it just kicks in for certain people. And then, like, if my wife wants me, oh, can you do this? Like, you know, you come home, they call it a honey-do list. Honey, do this, honey, do that. And it's just like, yo, I just want to come home, just sit down and watch the game and then go to sleep. <laughs> oh, wait, and I want you to feed me too. And then I can go to sleep. <laughs> like, but you can't. Like, sometimes you got to sacrifice. But the thing is, she would might have to sacrifice in that moment too. But she might want something done right then and there. But she also has to understand that I can either get none of it done or I can get some of it done based off of how much we each want to sacrifice, compromise, sacrifice, compromise, sacrifice. It is, it's just the flow of love. Like it just happens and, and, it, and it happens with, within fellowship and relationship. Without, it's crazy. I heard this the other day, um, every, form of relationship requires communication he was like you got I, I need to tell young people that marriage is not about i like, get married doesn't mean you just have sex all over the place it's just sex 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 it's is communication because without the communication you can't have the sex like there won't be any relationship so even as Jesus is communicating to us, telling us specifically what he wants, we have to communicate. 
And I, I think that that is an essential component of learning how to sacrifice and learning how to compromise. Uh, something else that I learned about marriage was that uh, when you say I do, just keep in mind that you're going to say I do to like four or five different persons. Because the person that you marry on that day is not going to be the same person. Like both of y'all are going to evolve and change. So like if that makes sense, because I just want to get y'all taking that. That's something that I heard that y'all not going to be like, the Jill and Sister Sherry that got married on that day, 10 years later, is going to be a whole different level than our whole version of ourselves. Try, try, try one Sophia later. Not even two. <laughs> one Sophia later. <laughs> yeah, one Sophia later. So uh, is, is that like a valid point? I just want to get y'all take on that. Hands down. Hands down. Okay. I tell Jay all the time, I was like, yo, whoever you married to right now, love every bit of her. Because there's going to come a point where she's going to transition, likewise yourself. But if Christ is the foundation and communication is strong, you guys can weather any storm. Any storm. Yeah, absolutely. That's why you sound like you're reading Proverbs or something, man. <laughs> Dropping some wisdom and some some uh, some gems. Uh, but no, that's good. That's good. That's all. I'm just trying to learn as much as I can from different type of areas, just in case I'm put in a, any type of position. Uh, Learning, brother. Where people ask me questions, and now I, I want to be able to try the best my best ability to answer any type of question. So I'll just continue to learn. Yes, sir. Okay, prayer, Jill. Um, yeah, I will leave the closing prayer to you, and the closing prayer to you, and I'll do my outro. Father, it is not by chance that your hand has kept us for this moment. I trust and believe that you are doing a great work in us and that you are faithful to see it through until the end. Father, with great expectation, we, we wait to see all that will stem from this. And I pray that ultimately it would bring you glory, that great fruit would come from this brotherhood, that iron will continue to sharpen iron, we thank you that you are the true vine, the bridge that connects us to the Father, Jesus. Holy Spirit, continue the work that you have started in us. May we continue to grow in you as we learn and journey through this book of John. You didn't leave us without a roadmap, Father God. So remind us day in and day out that in order to know where we're going, in order to know how to navigate, we need to open up the map. I thank you, Father, for your unconditional love, your sacrificial love, your love that never wavers, your love that is kind and patient, your love that does not keep a record of wrong, your love that will lay down, cause you to lay down your life so that we could live Thank you for your love. Your love that pierced you to that cross. Your love that allowed you to stay there, Lord, to give up your life on that cross. Thank you for your love. I pray, Lord God, that we will be examples of your love today in the world that we encounter. I pray that we would go out and pour out your love with whomever we encounter today in our homes, in the world, wherever we're going, please, I pray, Lord, use us for your love to be dispensed and dispersed. We thank you, Father, again, for this opportunity. And I pray that those who review this video, would, they too would feel your love and experience it with an abundance. Have your way in us today and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Forgive us, Father, as we have fallen short of your love and the expectation of you. I ask that you would build us up in your word, your will, and your way, that we would be obedient because of our faith, hope, and trust in you. We would learn to live out that definition that you have given us in 1 Corinthians 13. Again, I ask, have your way. 
In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you guys so much for coming along to this video. Uh, just thank you for being with us and be able to hear all the different opinions and learn more about the word. If you haven't already, hit the thumbs up on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload, YouTube will send you a notification. This is the end of the video. It's some motivation for young Christians. We're out. Bye, guys.